All right, hello and welcome to Ethan's Garage. This is gonna be a very rapid review of my thoughts of the uh, rental V6 Dodge Challenger I have today. I'm about to return it, so I don't have much time, so I have to be concise. First of all, it's not a Hellcat, but it's really not that slow either. I think people are a bit too harsh with the V6s and all the base model uh, muscle cars. They really are all pretty quick. It just happens to be that everything up the food chain with the V8s is incredibly quick. So the, the criticism is definitely fair. But it's a, it's a pretty decent engine though. I mean, at least performance-wise. Reliability, not very good. As is really almost anything in this car. And that's really been my, my big gripe with this car. It's such a great design. There's so many great performance elements where the people at Dodge clearly thought about it. Like this steering wheel is actually surprisingly nice. Keeps your hands at a perfect 9 and 3, super comfortable. Has uh, paddle shifters that do work. The transmission is very compliant. It's a uh, 8-speed auto. And they are either metal or something that's quite convincingly almost like metal. The gauges, very retro but very good. They have all the info you need even has all the zero to 60 timers, which is honestly really cool. Like if you're gonna buy a car like this, it's cool to include something like that. And in terms of also the V6 as well, the fuel economy is actually quite good. The listed uh, fuel economy, I believe is 19 city and 30 highway. And that is actually totally achievable. I've been definitely been able to get that currently for my trip here, which has been a few hundred miles. I'm averaging 24.1, but if you can see the windows, I'm in Los Angeles, so a lot of stop and go traffic, uh, a lot of city streets, and all that. So, it, you know, that does uh, reflect that in that number. But when they're on the highway, especially like in the 60 65 range, the 30 number is genuinely attainable. The main things, though, always come back to it's a Stellantis slash FCA product, and it shows, it really shows. There's just so many things that could be better. Every single material is just not good enough. The fit and finish is just not good enough. And it's disappointing because this really is a cool car and a good design, at least aesthetically. It just, there's obviously this war going on when they make these vehicles at Dodge or any of the FCA Stellantis ones, where the designers and the marketers have a great idea, a good looking car for a good segment with numbers that are good, but then the people who actually green light the budget and engineer it have a totally different view. So they'll make it happen, but they'll make it happen for a fraction of the price and a fraction of the quality. And the consumer is the one who, you know, feels that. And it's, it's just unfortunate. You know, it, it shouldn't be such a hassle on these vehicles, but everyone I've known who's owned any of these Stellantis vehicles, there's always problems. I mean, it, it's cra crazy problems. I've had friends, uh, cars that I've driven where as you're driving, screws just start falling out from like visors and all sorts of things like that. Stuff that I would never even imagine happening in a regular, like any of the cars that I've owned or Toyotas or any of that stuff. So, a little disappointing there. Um, seats are actually reasonably comfortable. I didn't think so when I first got in it though, I will, I will admit. Um, but that's also because I just got off a very long flight that was delayed. So, initially I thought it was uncomfortable, but now, not bad. Nice bolstering too, which I, I got a hand is actually pretty effective um, and actually not gone to the back seat um, not that's like that weird but would intentionally go back there but it looks fairly reasonable for this class I mean the Mustang and Camaro back seats are pretty tight and then back to driving um, the handling of this car is interesting whoever did the suspension definitely did a pretty good job uh, it actually tracks very straight very nice and corners surprisingly well but at the same time, the weight of this car is just stupid. It shouldn't be this heavy. Uh, roughly put, I, I looked side by side at like the V8 Mustang versus the V8 Challenger. And I, you know, approximate numbers, the V8 Challenger for a comparable spec is 700 pounds more, which is just entirely unnecessary. But you can just tell with this car that, I mean, not only is the, Dar the Dodge Charger platform absurdly old um, and just not modified in the ways they should have. Uh, they only modify when they have to put too much power in it, like a Hellcat or something, which they've done fairly successfully. But, you know, a lot of like more 
advanced technologies of today, all the high strength steel, all the fancy stuff that all the new, all the companies do these days. It doesn't seem to have worked its way into this car. There's also, you can't really see over the side because I can't see over it either. The visibility is awful. Um, one of the worst of any car that I've ever been in. And despite that, there is no blind spot monitor at all, which I'm not the biggest fan personally of a lot of the driver aids and new tech, but that's insane. I mean, this car, the whole time I've driven it, you know, you, you kind of get used to the size for sure, but also I'm always, you know, wondering if I'm gonna go merge lanes and despite checking, hit someone on a motorcycle or just drive into a car because you can't see anything. And especially when I first picked this car up, I couldn't place it on the road at all because you can't see the front right at all. And it's a very large car in every dimension. Um, and like, especially not being used to the car yet, it was incredibly hard to place. And I kept like, I had to squeeze by like a car in a parked car and I was very worried I was actually gonna hit. And I'm, I'm someone with very good spatial awareness and I've driven all sorts of cars, but just, the input from this can be really lacking. Um, other than that, I mean, it's a pretty decent car. It's kind of, in some ways, the fastest car in the world because it's a rental car and it's a V6. So rental, you know, you drive it like you stole it. V6, you're compensating for the fact that you don't have a V8. But I think that pretty much wraps up my thoughts for this. Time to get a little bit of B-roll for the outside. Um, and thank you for watching. I know it's a short little video, but I mean to do this my last rental cars, but I was too busy to do that, so finally got in on this one. But thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more content.